Okay, my name is Corinne Nguesson and I come from Ivory Coast in West Africa. I'm a banker and, uh, as I like to say, a part-time writer. Uh, the bank provides the food and the writing uh, feeds my soul and, and brings passion in my life. Okay, the best thing is that since we are not marrying writers, uh, it's very easy to find recognition for your work. But the worst, on the other hand, is that people, most people don't read, so you have a very tiny audience. Uh, Ivory Coast is a very open country because of its story, of its history of migration. People come from uh, every part of Africa and from the rest of the world, so it gives. Um, uh, a land which is a kind of melting pot where uh, there are a lot of uh, cultural exchanges on the food, on the, on the um, habits, the religion, the, the music, the arts, everything. So this really enriches my, my work as a writer and gives me more strength to, to my voice to talk about Africa. And I really draw my energy from that, this difference, this cultural exchanges. I start writing, it's a very long story, but I will try to make it short. Uh, it's something that happened when I was in 12th grade, and um, I had a French teacher of philosophy. She was uh, upset because we weren't interested in her, in her class, and uh, that was normal because we were in a scientific major with math, biology, and physics, which counted for seven, while philosophy was only two. And uh, one day she tried to stir up our interest by telling us a very tough sentence that is still ringing in my mind uh, uh, nowadays. She said, I think that uh, Africans don't have uh, the, the ability to abstract thinking. Just like that. So everybody was very shocked in the classroom. Uh, some of the boys wanted to, to molest her and so on. It was very, it created an uproar in the classroom. And um, I was shocked because uh, for the first time in my life, I realized that maybe there were differences between the races. And, I, and, I, and at 17, I had never, it had never occurred to me to, to think about that. And the, the sentence opened my mind, opened in my mind a sort of Pandora box full of questions on Africa. Why are, are Africans, uh, aren't Africans seen as uh, equal human beings? Why aren't we developed? Uh, why has Africa contributed so little to, uh, to modern civilization and so on and so forth? And that day, uh, th those two fateful hours, I decided that I had to write to fight back and, f and found counter arguments to, so, that to, to, so as to prove to my teacher that she was wrong about what she said. And uh, it took me 15 years, but I did it. And for me, I think that this novel is the best form of abstract thinking I, I, can, I can imagine. Okay, my first novel is uh, Mad Virgins, and um, it's a kind of philosophical tale, which is, which is as, as much a novel as an essay. The novel is, uh, is used to pace the universe of secrets of an initiation of Africa, and the essay tries to deal with all the questions which are linked uh, with underdevelopment. So it, in a way, it's the, it's the story of a man, but, he, but this man embodies Africa. And my new novel is on a, um, uh, is on a subject which is quite uh, neglected. Uh, there, there, have been, there have been numerous uh, um, books on this theme, the schizophrenia. But the one that, I, that I'm writing right now is kind of different because it gives the, the testimony of a true person uh, living with, with a schizophrenia disease, or at least what people think is schizophrenia.
uh, Amadou Kuruma, for sure. He's my favorite Ivorian writer and he's a great writer. He has been recognized internationally with the Goncourt Prize for, uh, for his novel uh, Allah n'est pas obligé. But the one that I liked most is uh, En attendant le vote des bêtes sauvages. Uh, it was, if it was translated into English, it would give something like While waiting for wild beasts to vote. This novel is, uh, talks about uh, a president dictator called Koyaka, from, uh, and he's the president of a fantasy land somewhere in Africa. This guy is listening to storytellers who, uh, who are uh, describing his life during six evenings, and, each, and, and they are flattering him, but he doesn't realize that they are deceiving him. And um, each evening is dedicated to one existing African president of the 20th century. So it is really wonderful, the irony that is, uh, that is, um, that is used in this book to talk about all the dictators, Mobutu, Gaddafi, uh, Iadema, and so on. And what I like about this book is that Kuruma dares talking about that freely and with a very truculent language. So it's, very, it's a wonderful work. Yes, I don't read poetry at all, but I write poems. And um, um, indeed, my, my novel starts with a poem, a poem on Ejagam. And uh, it's a sculpture that I saw at an exhibition in Paris in 2001. And it's the symbol of an initiation in the Leopard Society in the Ejagam people. So I like using poems to embodied images that are very uh, not, I, I want to say poetic, but it's not the, the good word. I don't find, I can't find any better word to say that. But it's, it is useful for, for sometimes for, for characters to be depicted with poems rather than prose. So that's what I tried to do. Definitely, it, it is very important and um, uh, however, in Africa, culture is not a very important stake. Um, there are two ways to, to do it. The first one should be to support writers, and the second would be to bring people to read more. For writers, I think that we should have in Africa, in, Iv in, in Africa uh, uh, more specifically, um, writing residencies, because we don't have any. And this would enable writers to be able to be freed from material needs. It's very important. If I wasn't a banker, I wouldn't be able to write because I wouldn't have enough money to survive. And I think that it's the, most, it's, it's the case for most of the writers in Abikos. And the second thing would be to create local literature awards. We don't have any, and it's a shame because uh, to, to be recognized, you have to... to to be recognized first in your own country before getting uh, an international recognition, but there are no local awards. Um, and to help people read more, we should have uh, several public libraries. Uh, I w I'm gonna give you a fact. Um, in Abikos, we only have one public li library, and it's in Abidjan, and it, this library is dying because of a lack of financing. Uh, all, the, all the books have been uh, flooded uh, several times, so it's very, it's a disaster. So we should have public libraries to help people read more and have access to literature. And this, the last thing should be to give uh, books to children so that they will be linked to, uh, uh, to the rest of the world. How do you feel it should be done in terms of languages, local languages versus Fran French? Um, this is a very serious topic and it's really uh, a, something that is going to endanger our native tongues because uh, nowadays uh, all everybody learns French at school but nobody learns our native tongues at school. So basically in less than 30 years most young Ivorians won't be able to speak any native tongue at all. And there should be programs uh, designed for that, but there is no political will to do so, unfortunately.
I, I love my job. I really love my job. It's very interesting and it's what I wanted to do, really. Uh, I wanted to work in finance and I'm doing it. So it's a, it's a kind of dream comes true. But writing uh, brings me a kind of balance. It brings me a, a brief, a new brief to, to, to describe the, the life in Africa in the way that I want to, people uh, elsewhere in the world to see it with, the, with, uh, uh, with all the cliches out. That's what I want to do in my writing because I realize that the power of a book is more important than the power of money. Really. In, in the long term, I mean. So I need to work in, uh, in, in finance, but I need to write too. Because I want to give this testimony. And I think that, I don't think that my testimony is unique, but it's something that can, that can cross the roads. And since I've been studying abroad, especially in France and in Canada, I know how people out there think and, and, and all the fantasy about Africa. And, and I can break those images more easily because of that. And I, sh and, it, it, and I feel that it's a kind of duty for me. I come from a big city, which is uh, very, w where there is a very high level of insecurity. So when I arrive uh, in Iowa City, the first thing that I, that struck me, struck me is that I could walk after two, after twenty, uh, after what, how do you say it in English? Ten p.m. After ten p.m. in the street without fearing anything, and everything seems so well organized and planned. It has nothing to do with Africa, where. Nobody respects the rules, and I really r realized that uh, this country has been well fought by by its founders, and there is an energy, there is a, a, a freedom of speech and an open mindedness that I don't find in my country, and I think that America is very. And something else that I want to add is that I went to San Francisco for a media residency trip and I realized how different uh, this part of uh, America is from, uh, from the Midwest, West Coast, uh, Midwest and so on. So all this is, is it's simply amazing. And um, I know now why people talk about an American dream. It is, in a way, for me, it's dreamland. If I hadn't been able to come to this residency, I wouldn't have been able to start my second novel. And that's the most important thing that I, that I get from this residency. I made friends, and I hope that, would be, that they would be friends for life. And that's a, a major asset also. Uh, and I would like to say that I love America.